Hi boys and girls, welcome back. This is Mrs. Maldonado. I have prepared another guided reading lesson for you. So let's go ahead and see. Now we have been um, moving right along to chapter two. Remember that we have this book that we will be working on for the uh, for this week. Um, and we already, yesterday we read chapter one. So today we are going to be uh, focusing on chapter two. And the title of that is Fish Features. Okay, and that will be starting on page 10. Okay, so we have also uh, been reviewing our text features. This is our table of contents. Okay, so let's go into chapter two. This is our heading. Okay, fish features. Do fish breathe? They do. Like you, fish need oxygen. You get oxygen from the air. Fish get it from the water. They use gills to do this. Gills are small openings on a fish's body. Okay, also, if you can notice this word gills, it stands out because another text feature, the word is bold. Okay, and down here in this, in this uh, photograph, we see there are uh, labels. And this is the gill cover, and this is the gills. Okay, and down here we have, well, this, by the way, is a snapper, and this is a grouper. And we see that the grouper has his gills uh, open, and this is the gills inside cover. Okay, so that's what the gills look like from the inside. Some fish have covers on top of their gills, but sharks do not. They have openings on the sides of their heads. Okay, so this is a photograph of a great white shark. And these are the gills that they have. Okay, first a fish takes water into its mouth, then it closes its mouth. This forces the water out of the gills. It does this again and again. This is how a fish breathes. Okay, so again, here is another label and it's pointing to the gills. And that's inside the, this is a basking shark, and that's inside of the gills. Okay, so we had a point, if I had pointed out before, the word gills, that's in bold. Okay, and this is uh, what we call a smart word, boys and girls, but that's another word for like a vocabulary word that we're going to be focusing on um, in this, in these two pages. So gills are openings on a fish's body that help it to breathe. So we have um, seen several photographs of a snapper, a grouper, a great white shark, and a basking shark. And we can see the differences of how their gills look. Okay, fin fins and tails. Most fish have fins. They help the fish to move in the water. The fins on a fish's side help it to steer. Some fish's fins can even help them to move through the air. Okay, so our smart word, as we can see here, is the word fins. So that's the word that's in bold, and it's bold. That means it stands out, boys and girls. So it is noticeable, okay? And fin is a thin, flat body part that fish use to swim in water. Okay, so here is a red Siamese fighting fish. Uh, kind of looks like a beta fish. And this is a pink wing flying fish. And look at it. It looks like it does have wings. It says, uh, well, it says a pink wing. So it's, they do look like wings. Um, many fish have fins on the top and bottom too. These fins keep it from rolling over. Okay. And this is a tropical grommy fish. Okay. So here are the tropical, this is the tropical grommy fish. And look at the, the fins that they have. You wiggle your feet when you swim. Fish wiggle their tails. A tail is really another fin. Tail fins help fish to swim. The sailfish is the fastest swimmer of all. So this is a sailfish. And look how big their fins are. Okay, so that that's it says that that's the fastest swimmer of all. And then we have the pink wing flying fish and the red Siamese fighting fish, like a beta fish. Okay, and then we have the tropical gourami fish. So our uh, smart word, boys and girls, fins. Okay, 
So we focused on the different kinds of fins that fish have and what um, the purpose of the fins are, what they help the fish do. And also their tails. Scales is our heading for this um, section. Your skin protects your body. What protects a fish? It's scales. Fish scales can be small or large. Some have smooth edges, some have sharp edges. Okay, so this is what, what scales look like. This is smooth scales of a Garibaldi uh, dam shellfish. Okay, so that's what its scales look like up close. Okay, so this is uh, sharp scales of a gobby. Okay, so look at the different, um, looks like a different texture and a totally different pattern than the scales of this Garibaldi uh, dam shellfish. Okay, scales fit together. They make a pattern on the fish's body. A shark's scales look like pointy teeth. What do you think the gobby scales look like? Okay, these are shark scales. Look at the difference between all of the scales. Okay, some fish do not have scales. They have a layer of slime that makes them slippery to catch. This is a pine cone fish. And look at its scales. Okay. Well, it says that some fish do not have scales. Okay. Um, so these are the different kinds of scales. They're different patterns, different textures. Okay. And our smart word for this section is scales. We learned that uh, scales are small, thin plates that cover the body of a fish or reptile. Uh, we learned that... Um, or we will learn that some reptiles also have scales. Okay, so here are the smart words. We're going to use our smart words. Okay, that's the heading of this section. It says, look at this diagram. Can you label the major fish features? Don't forget the gill cover. Okay, so here's the parts of a fish. Okay, we have the fin, we have the tail. Okay, we have the gills and then we have the gill cover. Okay. Um, talk like a scientist. What do you, what do you and a fish have in common? You both need to breathe. Fish use their gills, you use your lungs. What do you do when you're underwater? Okay, so now we have a fish word search. Okay, it says, look at the pictures and the smart words. Can you find the smart words in the puzzle? Be sure to look down and diagonally, diagonally too. Okay, so we have fin, we have fish, we have gills, we have scales, and we have tail. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, find all of these smart words or our vocabulary words in our word search. Okay, so for this first word, fin, I found it and it's right here. Remember, some of the words are going to be vertically and some are going to be um, horizontally and some might even be diagonally. Okay, so let's look for the word fish. Let's see if we can find that word. Okay, and I found it and it's right here, F-I-S-H. We found the word fish. Now let's look for the word gills. Okay, and I've also um, spotted the word gills, G-I-L-L-S, gills. Okay, our next smart word is scales. Okay, and scales, boys and girls, that one is a tricky one. And I see it, and guess what? That's the word that is diagonally. Okay, so S C. A L E S. It goes all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. Okay, and uh, the last word that we have to find, our last smart word is tail. Okay, so we are going to look for the word tail. And I found it, it's right here T A I L, tail. Okay, so we have fin, a fish, and th these are our gills, and scales, and tail. All right, boys and girls, you did an amazing job with those smart words. Okay, so now I have 
um, something that we are going to do that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. And this is um, how to make an origami fish. Okay, so let's go back. And I want you to get a piece of paper, boys and girls. And But this piece of paper that I want you to get Okay, it's a regular size of paper, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you're going to get a regular size of paper just like this. Uh, it could be a page, a page of a notebook, but I want you to fold it. Okay, I want you to fold it like this. Okay, because they're going to use a square. Okay, so fold it like this, like a square. And this piece that you have, that you have left over, cut that piece off. Okay, this extra piece that you have left over, so you're only going to have the piece that, um, so if I was going to cut this, this piece, I would cut this piece off that I'm going to fold up, okay? That's how much I'm going to cut out of my paper, okay? This piece that I folded up is what's left over. When I folded the paper, I'm only going to cut up to here, so when I open my piece of paper, it's going to be a perfect square. Okay, remember this extra piece that I did not use, I'm gonna cut off, okay? Or um, you can tear it off. Usually when, if you don't have scissors at home, boys and girls, if you keep on folding it, and then you try ripping it, sometimes it's easy for you to rip, and it rips straight across, okay? So you can also do that. Okay, um, so it mine didn't go straight, straight, but you can also do that and use that. So now you'll just have your square. Okay, so you're going to be using this square for your origami fish. Okay, so here we go. Pay very close attention. And boys and girls, if you see here, they're going to use construction paper. If you have construction paper, you can use construction paper. Or if you have crayons, you can just color your white piece of paper to whatever color you want. And that's the color that your fish will be. Okay? So it does not matter. It doesn't have to be construction paper. It could be any kind of paper. Okay? So let's get started with on how to make a paper fish. Okay? So pay close attention. If you need to pause the video, you may pause the video. Okay, so that's the square that I was telling you about. And that's a diagonal line. Okay, you're gonna fold it over. So your square, fold it over like that. Okay. So it's gonna look more like this. Okay, so you can open it. So remember, you're folding the paper like this. Okay, now they opened it and the line is up. Okay, so now you're gonna bring this piece up like this. Okay, kind of like a sailboat. Okay, then we open it up again and we have kind of like an X here, a crease. Okay, now we're gonna fold it again we're gonna fold it in half now. Okay, kind of like a hot dog fold. Okay, fold it like this. Have a hot dog fold. Okay, then, then you're going to fold it again, okay, in half, 
Okay, you're gonna fold it like this. Okay, remember it's like this. Now you're gonna fold it all the way up. Just like that. There you go. So now you have a small square. Okay. So they opened up the paper and now we have different creases. Okay, so now we're gonna fold it like this again. Okay, now they're folding it like this. Okay, and again like this. So we have another small square again. Okay, so these all open up like this. Okay, they should open up like this. Okay, and you see how it's, she's got. Okay, so this page, this side, you're gonna open it up and kind of make like a, another sailboat again, just like that. Okay. So this is the square that she has and it's open right here. So this, she wants us to open. Okay, remember it has the creases already. So we're gonna do just like this. Okay, we're gonna have a triangle. So it kinda opens from one side and it opens from the other side. And we have a triangle. Okay, so now, she's talking about the crease here. So we're gonna put this side down. Well, not all the way, just halfway. So we're gonna fold it just like that. Oh, and then we're gonna fold it one more time. So I'm gonna turn it around so I can fold it. We're gonna fold it again. So I fold it one, two times. Okay. So now I can open. Okay, so now that she's talking about the crease. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other side. Okay, just like we did the other one. Okay, which is this side. Okay, and probably what I'm doing doesn't look too clear, so just pay attention to what she's doing on the screen, boys and girls, because my picture's smaller, her picture's bigger. And you can see the creases a lot better. Okay, so that's folding it over. Okay. Okay, so those that's Okay, so that's the fish. And then you can just draw a little eye. You can use a marker or a crayon or whatever you like. And there's your fish. All right, I hope you've enjoyed making an origami fish with me. So if you like, you can make more than one fish. You see, uh, she made two fish. So if you wanna make more than one, go right ahead. Okay, boys and girls, thank